sounding joy, the sounding joy, repeat, repeat, the sounding joy. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. 
Well, folks, good evening. Good evening and welcome to Christmas Eve. We're going to begin by uh, singing some Christmas carols and then we're going to go into the, the regular service that has been put together. You'll find some, uh, some, some, uh, some words up on the screen and we're going to be sharing in these uh, songs together. So is, the first song is Still, Still, Still that we're going to be doing, so all the verses. If you have a red hymn book and you want to use that, by all means, number 47, but uh, the words will be up on the screen. I'll just have you sit down with this song and uh, maybe the other ones we can stand up, but just let's still, still, still together. One of the most, I think, wonderful evenings that we can have in terms of 2022, Christmas Eve. And we come together as family, we come together as friends, and we come together to, to honor the Christ child. The quote that I have for you today is, make your Christmas present to yourself some time to experience the timelessness of God's presence. Light a candle, inhale the calmness of the evening, open your heart to a new day, a new you, a new world. I welcome Gianetta Barril, harpist extraordinaire, harp to heart. Thank you, Gianetta. And also a thank you to Fiona Hayes, one of our best flautists in the whole world. <laughs> and Cody Ops are the most incredible musician in the world, too. There you go. So. <laughs> so.
So our, our introit hymn that we're going to begin with now, uh, you, can, you can stand up if, if you like with this. He is born, il est né, and you'll find it in number 50 in your Voices United book, or again, you'll find it up on the screen. So let's sing, He is born. Well, that's supposed to wake you all up. That's pretty good. Dude. <laughs> well, folks, we live in a world. We live in a world longing for God, the God who will be our guide when the path is unclear, the God who will be our courage when we are scared of what comes next, the God who will be our wisdom when we don't know which way to turn. The God who will be with us now and always, knowing the need for God in our own lives and in this heartbroken world, we light this candle as a symbol that God is with us, born in Jesus this night. This evening I light the candle of Christ. candle of Christ, the light for the world. I can see the light. As the choir sings their anthem this evening, I have a part for you to sing as well. <laughs> and that is, um, it's a phrase that we're going to repeat a number of times. This light of mine, I'll let it shine. And I'll introduce it in the song. I'll sing it through once, and then I'm going to invite you to sing with me. And it'll go a number of times. And then after a little bit, the choir sings above it. And then you're going to see when I hold my hand up, I'll give you this, the universal stop sign uh, <laughs> where it stops. But you get to take part in this beautiful song, I Can See the Light. Thank you. 
There's a star in the darkness that's shining so bright. There's a glow in the fireplace warming the night. There are twinkling lights sparkling on Christmas trees. But they can't compare to the light that I see from one to another, from Jesus to me. Down through the ages to this Christmas Eve, love lit a candle one Bethlehem night, and I can see the light. On that first Christmas back so long ago, where they wrapped baby Jesus in swaddling clothes. Though I wasn't there, still I know in my heart the light can still reach to you right where you are. From one to another, from Jesus to me, down through the ages to this Christmas Eve, love lit a candle, one Bethlehem night, and I It's a call to Christmas Eve worship. We do this responsibly. Come all of you who wander weary in the world. We have come to find our way, guided by a shining star and led by all the light of angels. Come all of you who search for meaning, all of you who search for love. We have come to seek understanding and to share our love with each other and the world. So come all of you who search for hope, all of you who seek shelter from the storm. We have come for the hope of all the ages born in us tonight, and we have come to rest in the tent of God. So come all of you, rejoice, so on this night is born in hope, the festive dream come true. On this holiest of nights, all nature sings and repeats the sounding joy. O come, all ye faithful. And it's uh, Voices United number 60, the Red Hymn Book. Again, the words will be up on the screen. And I'd invite you to stand if you're able. We'll sing this song together. O come, all ye faithful.
an opening prayer for Christmas Eve. So take a breath. Take a holy breath as we uh, listen to the words of a prayer spoken to the our gracious God. O oh God of Christmas, O oh God of festivity and friendship and family, this is a night of wonder. The night where the angels unfurl their wings and surround the world with a new hope, a new gift, a new dawning of peace and of joy. This is where it all began with the birth of a child and a new breath breathing, a new heart beating. And this picture may look perfect to some, and so it should be, for peace is what each of us yearns for and strives for. A quiet peace where a baby is born in a a stable and surrounded by those who love. Surrounded by animals snuggled in for the evening. And we've all seen the picture and how beautiful and serene it looks. And then we throw in the but. But we all know the Christmas story, which we're all going to hear once again in a little while. And we know that the Christ child was born in a time of chaos, a time of uncertainty, and a time of pandemonium. This still happens over and over again today. Peace is for some and chaos is for others. So each of us needs to be aware of those who find this season to be crushing on their spirit. We need to hold each other a little closer communicate at a much deeper level than just texting or emailing. The tears which some shed need to be felt by others, visually, internally, viscerally. This is what we are called to do, for the world is waiting, and a child to be born will give us the directions which we need. So, oh, come all you faithful, and you not so faithful, you can come too. For Christmas Eve brings on newness for everyone. Amen. An affirmation of our faith for Christmas, and I found this out of a book, and I think we should probably share in these words together. We believe in God who put music in the universe so that the birds and the wind, the animals and the insects, and the very stars in their courses are makers of melody. We believe in the God at the center of Christmas, whose hope for the world was imagined by seers and foretold by prophets. We believe in Christ, whose message of love and grace enables us to sing from the depths of our being, praising our Creator God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who touches the strings of our lives the way a master musician touches the strings of a harp, and causing us to produce beautiful resonance in the lives of others. We believe in the beauty of the manger, transformed by the coming of Jesus, and in the eligibility of every simple place to be ennobled by his presence. We believe in shepherds, in gold and frankincense and myrrh, in angels filling the sky with music, in nights of wonder and moments of grace. We believe in worship, not because it's reasonable or sensible, but because we can't help it. Our heart sings in response to our faith, especially on an evening such as this, where God touches the earth once again with living hope. Amen passing of the peace of Christmas to each other. You can stand up and turn around and numaste to each other and offer each other a Christmas blessing, and I will give you that moment right now to do that for all the folks that are around you. It's a bit of chaos, but that's what you need to do.
So it came upon a clear midnight. It came upon a midnight clear. It came upon a clear midnight. <laughs> it might be clear tonight, I'm not sure. <laughs> it came upon a midnight. Let's stand together and sing uh, number 44. There you go, 44. <clears throat> I'll have you be seated. Well, this Christmas Eve, we begin our readings from the, the Older Testament, words from the prophet Isaiah. And these words may be quite familiar to, to some of you, especially if you've been listening to Handel's Messiah 
For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the words of wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace. It's an announcement of a world transforming reign of righteousness and justice. This is a radical prophetic claim. This wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, is for all time and will be the light until all manner of things will be well. This is why we read this passage on Christmas Eve. So let's take a listen to this passage. Isaiah 9, 2-7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, You have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So the Christmas story as it unfolds, and you know, it always reminds us of the wonder and surprising nature of God's incarnation or God's embodiment. The preparation of God's coming into the world through the baby of Bethlehem happens amidst the requirements of imperial politics and, of course, daily life. And even as these forces work to name and number the entire world as the registration happens, God establishes a counter-politics that will place the kingly rule not in a palace, but in a manger. And the first part of the Christmas story places Mary and Joseph in the center of these contrasts. Rich, poor. Powerfulness, humbleness. Extravagant simplicity. It's a wonder of Jesus' birth story. So I'm going to invite Nancy Galeen to come and share with us Luke 2, 1 to 7. So the Christmas story, as it unfolds, and as you know, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not reading, um, I'm reading Yoke's story. So here we go, Luke 2, 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there's no place in the guest rooms. Thanks, Nancy. Nancy, thank you for that first passage. And we're going to sing The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy. And you'll find it number 73 in your red hymn book. And once again, I'll ask you to stand if you're able, and we'll sing this song together. Number 73. The Virgin Mary had 
a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. And they say that his name is Jesus. He come from the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come from the I invite you to all be, you know what, this is just a reminder that when I came from Holland way back in the 50s, and uh, some of you may associate with this, uh, I came from a Dutch Reformed tradition. You were never allowed to clap in church. It was, it was forbidden. It was a forbidden thing. So the second part of the uh, Christmas story I always find so interesting in that the heavenly choir of angels could have announced the birth to the mighty and the powerful, but instead to the lowliest, as shepherds were alluded to be at that time. By appearing to the shepherds, God showed God's willingness to appear to any who will listen. And the gospel reminds us that even when things do not go as planned, God arrives. And also we forget sometimes about the scary nature of the first Christmas that it was all about things that definitely weren't expected. Being a shepherd sitting quietly on a hillside in the still of the night, and then the heavens open up. Yeah, uh, definitely God awakening the world. Let's listen to the second part of the story, and I invite Peggy Gabinus to come and share that with us. Peggy. Good evening. I'm reading from Luke 2, verses 8 to 14. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel of multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Peggy. Angels we've heard on high, and as a reminder that to myself, we did this 
Years ago, when I was serving Elk Point, I invited the whole congregation to come and sing in this song, and the kids, I wanted them to make it really active. So what did the kids do? They all jumped on the pews. And they stood up in the pews, and they were singing that, oh, glory, and I went, perfect. So if you want to <laughs> jump on the pews, go, go ahead. <laughs> Angel be heard on high. Let's sing this together, number 38. you to be seated. So the third part of the Christmas story, the shepherds now had nothing more to do than to go and see what was told them. And sometimes seeing is believing. At least to them, it would be proof that what they had just experienced was something beyond incredible. God does this to us. Incredible sunrises and sunsets, crystal clear lakes, and streams and sparkling waterfalls, and a baby found in a manger, wrapped in little cloths, with a complete sense of peace surrounding all that is, God arriving in a lowly stable in the quiet of the night. So Bob Gibbonis is not well this evening, so he invited him, Laureen Dubois to come and share with us. Laureen, come and share the words. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. I'm reading from Luke 2, 15 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Doreen. Thank you. <clears throat> Christmas message tonight is called Silent Night, Holy Night. Albert Einstein, many years ago, said to the world, the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. And in our Christian faith, this evening heralds one of the most important events in our lives as each of us experience the mysterious. And each of us in our own way comes to this Christmas Eve service to touch a wee bit of that mysterious the mystery of God with us in the birth of a single child. And there's huge importance, there's huge importance in the Christmas story or the birthing story in that it, it sets the stage for how we are to exist as humankind in a multicultural world and how we look to find God in all the tragedies which happen to us individually and collectively and also how we look to find God in all of that which is so joyful and so heartwarming to all of our senses. I heard someone say once that the music which we hear is not the notes that are played, but really the resonance and the vibrations that happen between the notes, that, vi that vibration in the moment of silence that vibration would speak to us not only through sound, but also through our other senses that may capture that moment. And in between these two notes, in between these two notes, in that moment, in that moment of resonating and vibrating, the mystery of sound comes alive. And we can hear or feel the sacredness of a note or the sacredness of a chord. And this is what we come to celebrate and to remember this night. For in this sacred place of silence lies the spirit of Christmas. For in this moment in between the notes is where God awakens us and opens us to what used to be a silence and now has become the symphony of Christmas. And this symphony of Christmas represents an opportunity to once again step back and to look at what is central in our day-to-day -day living and possibly more important, what is essential. And I know in my own heart that what is essential for me is joy. And something else from my heart to yours, Christmas Eve is a challenging occasion sometimes for preachers for ministers. This service of worship is not a time for lengthy sermons or wordy theological analysis. No. It's an occasion for sharing the story of joy, of singing the Christmas carols that we so love, and pondering the mystery, wondering what it's all about. So on this occasion, less from the pulpit may in fact be more. The goal is to explain the odd arrival of the Messiah with the unwed mother, the stable of Bethlehem, or shepherds and angels and so on, but rather, rather I believe to help the story come alive in all of its radicalness and to draw you folks into the newness of what Luke writes about. The words of the Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, comes to mind how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Those words often sounded sentimental to me, 
as if Mary gave no cries during childbirth, or that Jesus wasn't a squalling newborn baby, that there was no commotion around the manger. There was probably all kinds of noises happening at that time in Bethlehem, and that was packed with people. But this isn't important to Luke. It's not important to Luke at all. And maybe, maybe that's not the kind of silence that the hymn has in mind. For if you wiggle those letters around in the word silent, you get listen. Because in those days, Jesus' actual birth really does not make much noise. And this, by the way, is the wild and the holy mystery of Christmas Eve. It's not for me to add details to it or try and explain it away. This quiet birth is the pivotal moment in the story, in my story, in your story, in God's story. Well, folks, this evening we've all come together to worship as a family, as a community of faith, as ones who share a common bond of hope and of peace. Some of us come to seek courage from the silence left behind, possibly of lost partners or family members or friends. Well, let me assure you, if tears fall, those tears are God's blessings. Some even come to hark the herald angels sing. But whatever brings you here, may you experience those moments of silence as God speaks to you. For in this breath of silence contains, contains all the breath of the ancestors and the breath of generations and generations that have come before and of all the generations to follow. We exist right now in a living moment, and we are the center of the past and the future. It is for us to say, O oh, holy night, and to find this significance in our lives. This evening, I'll offer to you an invitation to enter into a deeper and a more meaningful relationship with the calmness and the quietness of your soul's center to be cognizant of who you are and how you move through this world. We must remember that the road to Bethlehem is never without fear and trepidation. But when that final layer, that final film of saran wrap that surrounds our soul is discarded, we become exposed in our innocence as a newborn child. Another chance to begin life once again. This is the message of Christmas. God coming to us again, but this time through one who may seem of no significance, a child, a baby. Yet why not? For this proves that miracles happen. This proves that the powers and the principalities have no real upper hand on what is truly real. On this Christmas Eve, I invite each and every one of you to honor the silence, to speak to it, to embrace it. For in this silence lives new life, new hopes and new dreams, new ways of expressing deep thanks. And now I leave you with some words from my heart. Seek strength from each other. Set aside time in your life for prayer and for silent reflection. Find the Christ in Christmas and celebrate that. And may the spirit of Christmas always surround you with friends and family, food, and frivolity. God's blessings to each and every one of you. In the bleak midwinter, that was last week. <laughs> Today's better. <laughs> In the bleak midwinter, number 55, we're going to sing verses 1 and 2. 
and uh, standing for Rabel in the bleak, mid bleak midwinter. <clears throat> word of prayer for a moment for the offerings that have been given for the five o'clock service and the offerings that will be given. There's an offering plate at the outside when you uh, leave the sanctuary. I'll bow our heads for a moment. Oh God, we give thanks that we have opportunities of giving from our, from our abundance and giving from our hearts as we, as we further the wonderful news that uh, Lakeview United Church offers to the world. And we give thanks that you bless those gifts and you bless us. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we uh, sing to you, Holy Alleluia. <laughs> this evening, oh, <laughs> the choir sings in Latin. They sing, Hodie Christus natus est, Hodie salvator apparuit, Hodie in terra canut angeli, Letantur archangeli, Hodie exultant justi, Dicentes, gloria in excelsis Deo. Alleluia. Today, Christ is born. Today, the Savior has appeared. Today, the angels sing, the archangels rejoice. Today, the righteous rejoice, saying, glory to God in the highest. Alleluia.
Well, before we light our Christmas candles together, I'm going to offer you a Christmas prayer. We'll bow your heads for a moment. O God of darkness and God of light, spirit of life and love, we come together on this sacred night to awaken ourselves to the joy of Christmas, to the miracles of life, the birth of a baby, the rise of a sun once more, the magic of this earth, and the love of one another. The Christmas story reminds us that ordinary can become extraordinary, reminds us that any child, even our own children, can become prophets and teachers, leaders of nations, and even saviors, not of souls, but of lives. Working to end the ills and suffering in our world so the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, but finding where there isn't one. We give thanks for our many blessings, and we're reminded this night to share our blessing with as many people as possible, to consider that even the smallest gift, the smallest effort, can make a difference in someone's life in the world. For this is a season of giving. We pray for peace that war may end. We pray for food that none may go hungry. We pray for forgiveness that our world may begin to heal. We pray for dignity, for worth, for respect, and love and for justice and equality for all. But this prayer alone is insufficient unless it has action. And so we resolve to seize this moment. Lead us in the way to move, for this moment is precious, it's holy, it's powerful, it's full of hope and possibility. It's a moment we all need. This is our Christmas prayer on this silent and holy night. Amen. So folks, I'm going to take the Christ candle and light the Christ candle. Some folks who are going to share the, uh, the candle light with you from up top, the choir of two will go down the center. We'll light the candles, each person, and then at the end, then we'll turn the lights down low and we will sing Silent Night. Mm -hmm.
So folks, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. If you'd like to stay for a cup of coffee and some snacks, by all means, the upper hall is available for you. There's a, there's a service tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, uh, a Sunday morning Christmas Day service, and there's also a, a performance on the 30th of December. It's called Christmas Tide, and it has a whole bunch of different performers, including Cody Obst and others. It's a wonderful uh, time to finish off the Christmas season. You're all invited to come for that. Go in peace.